What's going on? YouTube Metal Complex here, and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to do with you guys. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Vox Anto Clyde. I have no idea if I'm saying that in, in the right order. In any case, this is an awesome knife, one that I am about to give away, actually. Real quick here, I want to let you guys know that this knife was actually donated specifically as a giveaway knife a long time ago by Mr. Spirited Whiskey. This was actually one of, if not my very first interactions with Mr. Whiskey, who has become a very uh, a good friend and uh, an awesome supporter of the channel. He has provided many knives for review. That's his Instagram tag, by the way, so give this guy a follow on Instagram. Um, but uh, great guy, and he said, hey, I want you to have this, do a giveaway. It's brand new, I've got the box. So thank you so much. That will not affect my ability to give an honest review. I always give honest reviews. It feels weird to not be honest about folding knives as, as you know, as dedicated and as passionate as I am about folding knives. So I'll always give an honest review. So what's this about a giveaway? What do you mean? Well, what a, you know, funny you should ask. What a fantastic opportunity to talk about this yet again. We're at 77 patrons. There are three patrons to go before I do a giveaway for both of these beautiful knives. Uh, the Mazarine Nimrod in carbon fiber and CPM 20 CB, or actually, I'm sorry, M390, they're the same. This was donated by Shaker, at ShakerMT1970, who's another great part of this channel, um, so you can check him out on Instagram as well, donated as a giveaway knife. The moment we hit 80, I'll be doing a giveaway for both of these knives at the at the same time. Two, two different people will win each of them. Um, it'll be for everybody, not just patrons, literally everybody. So if you're new to my channel and you'd like to be a part of that, make sure that you're subscribed and your notifications are set to all so that you're ready to go when that day comes. I also do once a week Patreon exclusive videos. So there's stuff there that uh, you will continuously reap the benefits of if you decide you'd like to become a patron. There's also Metal Complex logo stickers at the $3 tier and Metal Complex Knight helmet stickers uh, at the $5 tier. But you can join any tier, even the $1 tier. The support would absolutely mean the world to me. Anyways, let's go ahead and get a measurement. God, I almost got it. Two minutes, two minutes and 10 seconds. I was really close there. Anyways, overall length of the Giant Mouse Clyde coming in at seven inches on the dot. This beautiful trailing point blade, which I've recently learned about, and I always call it the Persian style blade, which I think is still accurate. Coming in at, yeah, uncontroversially, I think over three inches. Um, cutting edge also coming in right at three inches, giving the curvature and where that sort of tip or point of the scale is. So about a three inch blade. This is definitely one that I would consider to be a small to medium sized blade. Um, excuse me, very good size for EDC. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1? Rat 1 is coming in at 8.6 inches overall. So the, uh, the Clyde coming in substantially smaller. How about up against the Spyderco PM2? PM2 is coming in at 7.3 inches overall. So again, um, definitely smaller though. I, it is worth pointing out the cutting edge is actually the exact same <laughs> between the two there. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue? Ritter Hogue coming in at eight inches overall. How about up against the Benchmade Bug Out? Um, I think this is a great size comparison. Benchmade Bug Out coming in at 7.5 inches overall. Um, very similar in terms of height. The blade's a little bit shorter, but very similar in terms of height. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Para 3, Para 3 is coming in at seven and a quarter inches, so just slightly, slightly longer. Again, though, the Clyde beating it in terms of cutting edge. How's the action on this guy? Well, this is a thumb stud deployer, and I don't know if you guys can see in there, um, but it is running, to my knowledge, and Spirited or anybody else can correct me, um, it looks to be running on bearings, and it actually feels that way too. Now, there is some phosphory bronze in there, so I could be wrong about that. Those actually could be phosphor bronze, so they could actually be the cages for the bearings. Not sure. In any case, the point is, is the action actually feels fantastic. It took me a little bit to kind of figure out this once, this is one you got to sort of kick it this way, but once you've got that figured out, oh, the action's awesome. It feels really really good and you know now that i'm feeling it you got a lot of you guys are wondering like how do you how do you not know this well here's what i like to do i like to carry a knife and experience it i don't look any information up i don't do, i just experience it right i kind of i get it in and out of the pocket I, I play with it i just try to get sort of absorbed by it so that i can really build my honest thoughts sometimes if i read information check stats check blade length, I check the size of the hardware, I check the type of hardware. It creates these weird, you know, bias for or against it. And it and it sort of, it doesn't keep me from giving an honest review, it just sort of muddies it up. So that's why sometimes I don't know. 
Um, but uh, yeah, it, it feels really, really good. Absolutely. Um, it is not going to be one that drops shut. It's not really going to be one that um, it really even shakes up with encouragement. It's sort of, it's stiff, but it's sort of a glassy smoothness, which is why it kind of makes me think it might actually be on phosphor bronze. In fact, the more that I do this, the more I realize, yeah, I think it actually is on phosphor bronze. You know what? That's what we're going to say. I'm going to say it's probably phosphor bronze. Somebody will correct me in the comments section if not. So if you want to be absolutely sure, just check down there. Or there might be a there might be some words uh, up here that I put in as uh, uh, you know a, a clarification. Anyways, <laughs> welcome to my channel. If you're new, um, check this out. The shouldering back here is just crazy. I know we generally don't get to that till later, but look at that shouldering. Oh, so deep. I like that a lot. I don't know if it actually gives you an advantage, but I really like that. Action is great, very easy to deploy. Nice, perfect, crispy, medium detent. I like that a lot. What are we looking at in terms of weight? Well, for materials, you're looking at a very thin stock. Excuse me, I'm getting my fingerprints off of this beautiful blade. A very thin, tumbled uh, blade. Let's zero this guy out. Yeah, not, about 115 thousandths. Not coming in super duper thick. Then you're looking at a very thin, it's a countersunk uh, liner in there, and then you're looking at um, micarta. Um, so not a whole lot of material. The overall weight is coming in at a pleasant 2.47 ounces. Now, most people, unless you're like a hardcore, um, you know, basic bug out guy, and you absolutely have to have your pocket knife at under two ounces. Most people are gonna be very happy with that. It's under an ounce an inch. A lot of people like to go by that, so there you go. Um, no issues. It also has a wonderful carry profile. Wonderful. I mean, it's thin this way, it's thin this way. Uh, you can't touch the blade. It's very, um, it's just easy. It's, it's very pocketable. Excuse me, my phone's going off, so there may have been some shaking in the image there, but up against carry profiles of knives that nobody seems to complain about. You can see there, it's much better. And it's substantially thinner than even knives like the Para 3. Um, even a knife that has a carry profile like the Bug Out, it's actually going to be even easier to carry in terms of overall profile than the Bug Out. Um, though this way, let's check. Titanium scales, by the way, are exactly the same thickness as the standard FRN scales. They're exactly the same in terms of um, thickness there. So yeah, the Clyde is a, a fantastic uh, carry profile. So uh, there are two variations of this guy. This particular one, Right now, I believe is sold out, at least on Blade HQ. It might be available somewhere else at the time of this video. So check the date on the video. Um, there are two versions. There's this sort of, I'm, I'm sure they call it OD. To me, it sort of looks like just it's sort of a light tan, like a light brown. It's really nice, looks kind of aged. It's, it's very classy looking. Micarta, and then there's Black G10. Um, and then they all have a tumbled LMAX blade, at least as far as I know. I really like that they put LMAX on here. LMAX is a great steel and we don't see a lot of it. You used to see it a lot on ZT knives and Microtech knives. You don't see it as much anymore. I believe that LMAX is, um, uh, I believe LMAX steel is optimally hardened between 60 and 61, like many super steels. It is powder formed. Um, is, uh, is LMAX bowler? Ooh, I don't know. I think it is. I'm not really, I'm not hundred percent sure. It is um, very edge retentive and it is, I think, slightly tougher than S35VN while still being uh, still being stainless, but I could be wrong about that. It's right there. A lot of times you'll see knives that transition from S35VN to LMAX or from LMAX to S35VN, and I believe it's because they're similar in terms of cost from a manufacturing standpoint and they're very similar in performance. I think LMAX is a little bit better in terms of edge retention. A lot of people really like LMAX. In fact, when it's heat treated properly, you'll read very few negative things about LMAX in general. So, great steel. Let's take a look at this trailing point blade. Beautiful. I was not a fan of this blade shape until I handled it on this knife. This knife really grew on me. Um, it's an awesome blade shape. Lots of belly, very slicey, absolutely very, very slicey blade shape. Um, the downside to this is that you come to a very, very thin point. Um, it's going to be decently durable, but this, again, I mean, this is the type of, it's like I always say in my videos, it's not the type of knife you really should be jamming in and prying with. You shouldn't be doing that with any knife, but this tip is a delicate tip. This is, this is the type of tip you can use to get a splinter out of your finger or do some delicate puncture tasks, things like that. It's not the type of knife that you use to get two bricks apart that, you know, the mortar still holding them together. That's not the right tool. So 
I'm being sarcastic, but you guys get what I'm, I'm talking about. Crown spine. Love that. The rounding of the spine just looks really nice. The blade all the way around is fantastic. Very little marks. It just has the Ace logo or the Giant Mouse logo. And then it says L Max. You do have a thumb stud that's just on one side. I suppose you could, no, you can't take it out because there's no room, there's no cutout to engage it. This is a right, really a right-handed only knife. Um, you can put it in your left-hand pocket, but you're gonna be turning it over and really sort of fumbling around and, and still having to use your right hand a little bit to deploy it. That's just the case that it is. So it's a downside, sorry lefties. It's not gonna be a deal breaker for everybody though. You do have an orange thumb stud on here and initially I was like, that's weird. But you know what, the contrast with the micarta, I don't know how I'd feel about it on the black G10 version because it would look like a Halloween knife. On this knife, it kind of looks like an outdoor tool. And then in this case, you know, this is a knife that I would carry around and use in a lot of different settings. If I was outside, I'd be happy for the orange thumb stud and orange backspacer because if I dropped it, it'd be ever so slightly easier to find. So that's kind of neat. And I kind of do like, orange is not my favorite color in a knife, but I like it in this case, the contrast against the micarta. That's really, really cool. Um, anyways, it is a little tiny bit in the cutting path, so be aware of that if you're gonna cut straight down. That's never a deal breaker for me, you know, because most of us cut like this, considering how we use knives and the curvature of the blade, you're probably gonna be doing more of a uh, slicing task that draws material this way, but if you're gonna cut straight down, it is gonna catch a little bit on that uh, thumb stud. You have a nice sharpening troll there, so that should be, it should be pretty easy to touch up. Um, moving down to the scales here, nice chamfering all the way around. Love the look of that micarta, it's beautiful. Let's take a look at the size of the pivot here real quick. I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy Wea bit selector. And there's the TH screw, as well as my Wea magnetic driver. Both items are down in the description, as well as many of the knives that you see on my channel all the time, whether it's the Rainbow Mermaid, or it's Para 3, or it's you know, the rat, you know, they're all down there categorized, whatever your itch is. If you're watching my channel because you're like, I just want a new thing, check out my description. I've got a whole bunch of amazing stuff down there. Something for everybody, absolutely. Uh, e even these tools and they're very inexpensive. So anyways, let's check the pivot and see what we're working with here. Uh, yeah, that's a T8. Now I know for sure that those, well, I'm all, I've said that before and been wrong. Here's a T6. I'm almost certain that those handle screws are gonna be T6. Yeah, they are. Uh, I don't like T6, you guys hear me say that all the time. It's not a deal breaker, just be cognizant of it. If you're gonna take it apart, be careful, don't wrench on anything. Don't use red or blue Loctite on handle screws, especially ones that have T6 heads. It's a recipe for stripping either the bit or the head of the screw, and that's not good. Moving down here, you can see we have an orange backspacer with a lanyard loop. I, I really like how this looks. It's nice and seamless. It's just nice, it's cool, you know, I, I like it. We didn't talk about this, there's a, a plenty of an opening to engage the liner right there. A little bit of jimping there on the liner. And there's also a little bit of jimping back here on the blade, we didn't talk about that. Not, not really enough to really be functional, but it's back there. Super easy to engage, and it also acts as a good lock-in point on this knife. It's not really, you're not really sinking all the way in because it's really only on one side, but I can feel it and I feel comfortable on a body that, you know, doesn't really have a finger guard. You know, so that kind of acts as that there. You're not really gonna be putting a lot of pressure on a knife like this because it's not a knife that you're gonna use super duper hard, but if you need to lock in, you're gonna make a cut up against thick cardboard. Putting your finger in that little slot right there really, really helps. Um, I love the, I'm gonna assume this is aluminum. I love the look of that contrasted up against um, the, uh, the uh, micarta here. On the other side, we have an awesome wire clip. I, I just, I'm, the wire clip's growing on me. I always complain about it and then I keep coming across New models where I'm like, yeah, it actually works really, really well. This knife doesn't carry completely deep, but it carries just beautifully. It's so easy to get in and out of the pocket. I love this thing. Love the position of the clip. Love how the clip looks on the knife. You get cool kind of dressiness, but you also have some sort of minimalist factors as well. This is a very straightforward design. It just has a lot of elements of like being dressed up and a lot of thoughtfulness, you know? So anyways, uh, moving on here, the rest of the knife is pretty much the same as the, the front here, except you have a non-adjustment um, uh, side pivot, just sort of a rear um, dressy uh, side of the pivot. Um, not really dressy, you know what I mean. There's no adjustment head for it. Um, but yeah, everything is, is just great. I can get my whole hand around this knife, and that's because there's not a flipper tab or any real finger guard there. You know, on the downside, you do have to be cognizant. You can easily run your fingers up on that blade, and that is a very sharp blade. That will definitely do a number on your hand, so be aware of that. Um, there's not really any sharp 
corners to speak of, you know? So, I mean, on the whole, there's not a lot of downsides to this knife. I don't like the T6 body screws, but okay, whatever. Very simple construction. You can see there we do have the countersunk liners, which is helping out um, in terms of overall thickness while still keeping its, its structural integrity, which is important on a small knife. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's just nice. Like everything about this knife is just uh, not, everything about this knife is just nice. It's very classy, you know? Um, I will say this over time, you know, that thumb stud works really, really well, but given the position that you have to dig your finger in and you have to push it sort of that way, you, you are going to notice like once you get the hang of it, you're like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it is going to tear your thumb up a little bit, not too bad, but you're going to notice it after a while. If you guys are wondering, there is no blade play on this guy up, down, left, or right. We have lockup coming in something like maybe 50, 60%, and we have absolutely perfect centering. Uh, there is no, there's no wiggle, there's no play or anything. It's very solid. This is obviously a very well-made knife. So anyways, little downsides. The thumb stud is, um, after a while, it's, it's going to kind of bite into your finger a little bit. Eh, no big deal. Um, there is no finger guard, so you have to pay attention to where you're putting your hand. The tip is a little bit delicate, but not that's not really a negative. You just have to be cognizant of what you're using it for. Um, the uh, handle screws are T6. I don't really like T6, but again, it's not really a deal breaker. Here's my favorite part about this. Um, this knife is coming in. Now, like I said, this particular version is discontinued, but the G10 and LMAX version is coming in at about $153, something like that. That's a, that's a good deal. Um, I'm, I'm on board with that. After handling this and playing with it and seeing the build quality and just sort of enjoying it, you know, this is an excellent, excellent EDC item. Like I said, it's got some minimalist elements to it, but at the same time, it's fun, it's cool. The, the end user can be like, I'm not, I'm not paying for anything more than what I need, but it still has some cool features that make it kind of unique and kind of an interesting conversation piece, as well as a good dependable cutting tool. I think $150 is spot on for this. I have no problem with that. I know I normally am like, eh, it's okay, but it could be 20 bucks less. And then I say, everything could be 20 bucks less, so that's kind of trivial. No, seriously, I think the price they have on this guy is spot on, I have no problem with that. So you can pick it up for yourself, or you can just wait until I inevitably, the reason I'm doing this review this week is because I feel like I might hit the giveaway mark this weekend, in which case there will be, the, the giveaway will go up on Saturday and you'll be able to enter and then we will uh, draw for it uh, exactly one week. But check the date on the video. Obviously, if you're watching this two years in the future, then that none of that's going to be relevant. So, ch so check that out. If you're not subscribed, make sure that you're subscribed. Make sure your notifications are set to all um, so that you're, you're ready to go. But anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it, guys. Again, thanks so much, Spirited Whiskey, for donating this knife to the channel. This is awesome. I really like it. It's going to go on my most recommended knives playlist. Absolutely. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on this Metal Complex logo right here and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.